So let's provide a big launch festival welcome for Wealthcoin. Let's hear it. Woo! Hey guys, I'm Simon, this is Stefan, and we're excited to share Keza with you. Not Wealthcoin, as, as Jason mentioned. <laughs> So the goal that we have is to enable investing for everyone. We want to do that through Bitcoin. So let's jump right into the, how the app works. The first step is that users can pick one of our three ep expertly crafted portfolios. The more aggressive the portfolio, the more equity exposure. Very much like how Wealthfront and Betterment do this. The second step is they can deposit Bitcoin. They can do so with either Coinbase, which is live in 20 countries, or any Bitcoin wallet that they choose. The last step is they're able to track their portfolio. One simple screen, all the most important numbers they need, right there in their palm. So why is this important? Why have we built Keza? Well, when you look at the context of what's happening in the US, apps like Wealthfront and Betterment have made it incredibly easy to invest. These services are almost universal. But the second you look outside the United States, it's a completely different story. High minimums and high fees have made it so that most investors just can't invest. So that's why Keza is building financial services for the next billion users, leveraging mobile and Bitcoin. So let's walk through a case study of one of these billion users. This is Graham. As you can see, he just got married. He's pretty excited. He's South African. He's 34. And on his wedding registry, he didn't put pots and pans or homemade or, or home electronics. He put one thing, Bitcoin. And the reason he put Bitcoin is that he wants something he can put away and have for his kids in 15 years. He's scared that the South African rand has fallen in the last few months. So what he's done is he's invested his Bitcoin with Keza, and as you can see here, he's up 15% in the last 15 months, whereas otherwise he'd be down 35% had he held in rand. Now, over the course of these months, he's able to check in on the app, see a really clean interface of how everything's doing, all the data he needs, the big numbers, and if he wants, he can get into granular details. You can also see the specific components. So Keza is being built to leverage the billion dollars of venture capital that's gone into building out the Bitcoin infrastructure. We now have booming emerging market Bitcoin wallets in India and Brazil that we partner directly with, so that if you have Bitcoin in Brazil, you're just two taps away from investing with Keza. And that's the powerful story here. It's investing for people in emerging markets who've never been able to do so before. And that's what gets us really excited to be launching Keza today. So our team is myself and my co-founder, I led marketing communications at Robinhood. We were able to scale the world's fastest ever mobile fintech startup um, from zero to a few hundred thousand users in under a year. My co-founder led mobile engineering at a, at, um, at a mobile video startup that was acquired by StumbleUpon. They were featured by Apple 15 times, won a Webby. We intimately know how to build and scale beautiful mobile experiences. So today we're launching Keza. We're live on iOS with our beta app. You can go to getkeza.com. If you have any Bitcoins, we'd love for you to deposit them. Um, please check it out. Uh, we're also in Product Hunt, and that vote would be awesome. Um, so thank you so much for your time. We're GetKeza, getkeza.com. So uh, I might be thinking about this the wrong way, but if Bitcoin crashes for whatever reason, what happens to your business? So yeah, yeah I think if Bitcoin crashes, there's definitely like an existential crisis in the entire space. And I, I would say we're definitely not immune to that. <laughs> I, that's like saying, you know, an ed tech startup, if schools were to disappear, what would happen? I think, you know, Bitcoin <laughs> is pretty fundamental to what we're building. Maybe you could just tell us, are there any countries you think specifically would, would have your target user where maybe it's very difficult for them to invest in the U.S. stock market? Yes, specifically Brazil and India are two of our target markets. Um, Brazil has had a very unstable local currency, and fees are about 3% for the average mutual fund. So you have a combination of sort of lack of investment services and really high fees. So you're seeing growth of Bitcoin adoption pretty impressively there, and that's where we've been focusing a lot of attention. Does so is that why you chose Bitcoin? Because you feel that in these markets where the currencies are unstable, Bitcoin has a footprint? The footprint's being told by, by the primary data. If you look at the wallets, where they're acquiring users, you now have 275,000 users in Brazil who use Bitcoin. And that number was like 5,000 18 months ago. Um, you're seeing the same story in Nigeria and Thailand. Southeast Asia is a really strong story. So if you keep sort of expanding the numbers out in three, four, five years, the most powerful financial applications will probably be built on a global financial infrastructure. And that's probably going to be Bitcoin. 
Does it make sense to um, partner with existing uh, investment firms so that you are the uh, Bitcoin um, alternative? If, if I am invested somewhere and I want to put it into Bitcoin, I don't have to go somewhere else. I can actually, you are now a choice in their portfolio. Yes, I'm definitely planning on hassling Adam Nash backstage and seeing if we can integrate with, with some of those players. All the players have done an amazing job, and you're even seeing in the U.S. a lot of users who have Bitcoin want to use Keza. So that's definitely on the table. One last question. How, how do you build a brand as an emerging financial services startup and get people to trust you? you know, I think these challenges have been faced um, by a lot of these companies, Wealthfront, Betterment, Robinhood, where I used to be. And design is a really big component. Customer service is a really big component. When you're sort of on an even playing field and you're brand new, it's the small things that count a lot. And so if you're there 24-7, you build in a really intuitive and simple way, and you don't have sort of like the long, small text at the end of your pages, and everything's really, really thought out, I think you have sort of a, a front lead. Right. Okay. Well done. Sarah for Keza. Thank you.